Hey guys, Caleb of Nebraska Farm Boy here today, and I want to talk about a subject that I think that a lot of you guys will uh, connect with, and that is the subject of how difficult it is to connect with young men of this generation. Uh, you know, the older I get, it seems to get more and more difficult to connect with the young men of my own generation. Uh, I think that part of that is because, you know, when you're young, uh, everything is based off common interest. Alright, so maybe you have, say, a shared interest in a sport or a hobby or you like to hunt or your dad's work at the same place or something like that or you just happen to be playing a game together you know that's great that's fine I think that's 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 just fine especially when you're younger but as you get older a relationship means more than that a friendship between two men needs to have more meaning to it than just a shared common interest I want to get more into the problems of that uh, philosophy here in just a second. Uh, but first, I wanted to look at what a real friend looks like. Now, I have a video that I did with a friend of mine here not too long ago that I want to link at the end of this video so you can check that out. So I won't be too, I'll try to be brief um, in my little description here. But you know, essentially what a real friend should be is someone who has shared beliefs and values with you. Someone who, you know, stands for the same truth that you stand for. Someone who's going to build you up, who's going to, you know, push you onto higher heights. and what I'm seeing now just isn't that. What I'm seeing is people who are either at the same level or lower level and they're tearing each other down. Either they're at the same level and they're keeping people from uh, other young men from attaining to higher levels because they don't want to push themselves or they are um, at a lower level and they're trying to pull other young men down to their level. And that's just not a good thing. It's not healthy. And essentially it's created a lot of shallow, empty relationships. And basically these relationships are built on a common interest. When that common interest fades or someone cooler comes into town, uh, they are done just like that, like a drop of a hat. And I think that's uh, created a lot of loneliness in our society. I believe that young men in this... Um, of this generation are more lonely than any other generation. Obviously, I wasn't in the other generations, but you know, I read history and stuff like that. I think that they're more lonely than any other generation. Uh, and that's because they're so disconnected, so isolated, and they won't step outside of themselves. I know that I have a hard time finding people who are uh, willing to step outside of themselves, willing to share my beliefs. Well, who do share my beliefs. I'm not trying to sound like I'm going to pound my ideas and philosophies into people's heads that sometimes I do. Uh, but really what I mean is, you know, it's hard to find a young man who wants to actually try, who wants to actually stand by you, be that good friend that you need. And uh, yeah, the struggle is real and it's created a lot of problems, you know, for us as a society because loneliness is, uh, someone who's lonely isn't going to try to improve themselves. They have no reason to improve themselves. They're stuck within themselves. And that's why I think that, you know, real good, solid relationships between men is so important because it helps them to build each other up. And when we lose that, like we have so often, uh, you know, I, like we have so much in this culture, uh, I think that that has some very serious effects. Um, you know, the and then when you look at what it was replaced with, with um, cheap, uh, meaningless relationships, sometimes over social media, sometimes you, m some people have completely friends who they've never met. And um, it cheapens relationships if you are going to do that. And eventually, you know, some of the most important things in life have been, you know, hijacked and made into a, a much cheaper form. So if everybody's lonely, nobody can connect, real relationships are in decay, what are we going to do about it? Because, you know, we got the problem, but we're going to have to fix that problem, right? Otherwise, what's the good of the problem? You guys already know about this problem. I mean, I think we all struggle with loneliness at some level. Uh, and again, I'm not going to just point the finger at you this time, right? I, a lot of the times I point the finger at you and say, hey, fix yourself, and your problems will go away, which is true in a lot of sense, in, in a lot of situations. In this case, however, you know, loneliness is kind of the natural response to the, situ uh, to the situation that we're, we've been put into, you know, where there is very few people uh, who share, who may share your beliefs or may uh, be willing to have a 
deep, meaningful relationship, a deep, meaningful friendship with you, you know? Uh, so that can be very difficult, and it's, you know, it's not like we're going to just beat the, the, um, the natural response from the problem. We've got to fix the problem, okay? But the problem really does start with us, I think. I think that we need to first, as young men, fix the way we view relationships before we can expect to have meaningful relationships with others, okay? Because a relationship is always two-sided, right? Well, it's not always, but it should be. A good, meaningful relationship is two-sided, okay? So first, we've got to get outside of the, you know, shared interest mindset. We've got to go deeper, go be willing to, you know, share our beliefs, share our values. And we may indeed find that there's more people who share our beliefs and our values than we actually actually thought uh, because you know we just weren't willing to share them in the first place so how would they know you know and we need to be willing to take these uh, you know friendships to a deeper level I'm not suggesting that we should be sharing all of our deepest secrets sharing our hearts and all that great stuff or not great stuff I'm just saying that we should be very intentional about how we interact with other people as part of serving other people is treating them as other people okay and treating that our relationships well, like, you know, like it's between two people, two people with shared values and beliefs. Um, I feel like I just repeated myself again. Uh, so I hope you got the point out of that. So, uh, you know, first we've got to look at ourselves, okay? And then we've got to look around us, okay? And I think that maybe part of the problem of why we're so lonely is that we aren't looking far enough, okay? I'm talking about young men. I, you know, I enjoy my relationships with the young men that I do know who do share my values and beliefs, I just, you know, they're just few and far between. So we've got to, if we're going to, you know, actually have meaningful relationships, we've got to widen our sphere and um, start looking outside of maybe our age group, okay? You know, I have such good uh, conversations with guys who are three times my age. I, you know, I have, those are good, meaningful conversations, you know, uh, and I think that, you know, I think it's a uh, as a society, we have lost that um, connectedness with other age groups, partially through, you know, segregations in schools, segregations in church, segregations everywhere. You know, we've kind of lost that idea of, you know, sh of connecting with people outside of our age group, group, both older and younger. You know, I've had good conversations with kids who are you know, 10 years younger than me. You know, it's it, you got to be willing to go outside of your age group, you know. And then I think we need to look closer. I think we may just be looking too far. We may be far-sighted here. What if we looked at that group of people who are right around you, who are supposed to be some of the closest people to you, which happen to be your family, and what if we made them our close allies and friends and had good, meaningful relationships with them? You know, maybe we would be less lonely if we did that. You know, I have a great family. I don't deny that. And, you know, I, it's not all me. I didn't, like, build my family and build all the relationships here. But at the same time, if you're not willing to step outside of yourself and, you know, you know, take that first step to building a good relationship with your family, oftentimes it's not going to happen. So, you know, I think that your family has the potential for being some of your closest friends. I know that my family is my closest friends. And, uh, you know, I think it's, we've lost that again as a culture. And I think that it's time that we came back to that. You know, I think that's how we're going to fix some of our loneliness here. And then we go and I'm going to shoot myself in the foot and decry social media, which I happen to be on. Which YouTube is a little bit different from most social media. But I'm not going to defend social media in any way, shape, or form. And, you know, you need to stop these fake, or... Stop relying. I'm not saying that you should get off social media completely or anything like that. I'm not being that radical. Just saying that you need to stop relying completely on these fake friendships with people you've never met and people who don't care about you, okay? You need to shut the phone off, put it away, or put it away from you, or whatever, whatever it takes, and you need to have a good, rela a good conversation with a real person, because that's important, okay? You can't... I mean, the internet's great. I don't, I'm not gonna say it's not great. And, uh, you know, people, when, when like-minded people and people who share our values and beliefs are so spread apart, the internet can bring us together. And I think that's a good thing, but we need to be so careful because it's sometimes it's good. 
Sometimes it's good to do that. Other times you need to just talk with a real person. Doesn't even matter if they're anything like you. It'd be better to talk with a real person than to constantly be talking, even with good people who you've never met and who just can't care about you like a real person cares about you. Okay, I'm just gonna, you know, gonna throw that out there. And then finally, protect and encourage the friendships and relationships that you already have. You know, don't think that you need to just ditch your uh, maybe shared interests, friendships, and, you know, look for friends who share your values and beliefs. Hey, a friend, you know, if you're gonna ditch those friends, why would I want to be friends with you, you know? You've got to build those relationships that you already have. You know, you can build a, a friendship that maybe started out as maybe just a shared interest friendship into a meaningful shared values and beliefs friendship by, you know, just counseling or, or just talking, you know? Maybe you'll find that this guy actually is a really cool dude and he actually knows, it has a lot of shared values. Maybe he has beliefs that you need to switch you know, maybe he has stuff to give you. That's what I mean to say. You know, maybe, uh, you know, he probably does. I, I find that most people, I have something that I can gain from them, right? So, uh, you know, build up those relationships that you have now. Don't take them for granted. Don't be picking and tearing them apart, finding faults in them. Instead, be building them up. Fulfill your part, and oftentimes, the other person will fulfill theirs, okay? Now... <laughs> That's kind of my spiel for you. Uh, I will say, on the back side of that, you know, I said I was decrying social media, and I get that, but I am here, you know, if you want a friend, a virtual friend, I'm here, I'm killed, and, you know, uh, you can, you know, interact through the comments and all that great stuff. You know, I'm not going to replace a real person, I get that, but I am trying to build kind of a community of like-minded young men around here, so if you happen to be here anyways, I really would appreciate it if you just go down in the comments, you know, I don't know, give your thoughts on the video, make you, or just, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. I don't know, it doesn't matter. I always love hearing about it from the comments. Uh, whatever comes to your mind. So. Well, that's not good YouTube strategy. YouTube strategists tell me I need to tell you exactly what to do, otherwise you aren't gonna do it because you don't. Yeah, that's my job. Anyways, I'm a bad YouTuber, but I can be a good friend. <laughs> Without any further ado, uh, I got that video up for you on being a friend. Uh, that was done with uh, Sam Turner, who happens to be my friend. Um, so, uh, I hope you enjoy that, and we will see you next time.